Alrighty. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Game number two. Series number two. Day number seven, I think, Mr. Cat, as we continue through here for Group B. At least uh, we do know it's day two of Group B. And uh, two of those squads, Geek Fam Trust, just had a rather one-sided affair here. And there was no love, uh, as Geek Fam took the game rather handedly. Um, Trent Pax here. I'm joined by Annie Droid. Hi. Hello. How you doing, man? I am uh, starting to feel I got a little bit of a, a tickle in my throat today. I, know, okay, I had that last Maybe night. I just couldn't fall back. asleep because I kept coughing. <coughs> Something spreading over the team speak, man. That must be what it is, I think. But uh, it's okay. I think it's all the shoveling, personally. I am just... I am beat. Team pick. You know, it's, uh, it's a lovely morning here. The sun just came up a couple of minutes ago. So uh, let's, let's cast some Dota, man. Last game of the day, at least for Mr. Cat. Stay tuned for elimination mode starting in just a couple of hours. The grand finals Seconds are today remaining. after an ability draft show match. So Moonduck just, Five seconds I, they're they're taking traditional Dota and just fucking it up real good. Yeah, standard stuff. It's good. Should be exciting. Uh, we, we, we did a little bit of the testing with the ability draft last night. Should be okay. Looked like it was going to work, but who knows? Well, uh, we'll find I mean, out. The, <laughs> the massive failures are always funny. There's some heroes that just flat out do not work in ability draft right now, but we'll have to see. Again, something that's going to shake it up a little Ten bit. Seconds. Skill trees in ability draft. You have to I use know. the skill tree of whatever like hero shell you're given. So if it's one of those skill trees that's like all like you know, amplifying your spells and whatnot, well then you are shit out of luck. Yeah, gonna, gonna have to think about that one when you take your abilities. But for now, we at least get to watch the regular Dota. I have to say, even with elimination mode. As much as I love it, I do still kind of love captain's mode. Although elimination mode is is great and all, it's it's nice to see because uh, we are in a meta that's pretty open right now. There's nothing too crazy. Yes, there's Slardar, and he's pretty amazing. But other than that, things are okay. We're pretty balanced all around. Uh, so trust they will opt for a juggernaut very early on in this draft, taking it up with the Sand King. And I have to say, although I said the Sand King would be the most important here in the last game, I think he did exceptionally well. He came up pretty high in the net worth. Uh, he was given a lane where he was going to get gold, which was important. Although it's not fun against an axe, he still had the opportunity to actually. He got a solo kill lane. on the axe pretty early on as well. Yeah, no, he did. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, just like the game was just not Radiant in a state where he could bring that back. Like if it was a little more even, then he could have had time, uh, like a chance of the opportunities. And his only one chance to make a rotation didn't pan out. And well, we all saw what happened after that. So when you look at the fights that Trust kind of won, and it was on the Sand King, the epicenters did a good job. But we'll see if he's gonna have better luck here. Now, I, I gotta ask. It's it's kind of old news now. What do you think about Slardar's remodel? Oh, it looks awesome. Uh, I do yeah, I have to say, though. I think it looks fucking terrible. What? I think it looks atrocious. How he's got, like, he's like weird teeth sticking he's out cool. of his face. Like, that's not that's not right. He looks like a Digimon gone wrong. No, you're just wrong. I, you're incorrect. But yeah. we can agree that Enigma looks badass now, I, I assume. Yeah, absolutely, dude. I like All the right. tats. All right, sick. Yeah, no. He's got tats. He's got, like, an eight-pack on the front and the back, really. He is just absolutely shredding. Yeah, hitting the gym pretty hard. So, uh, I haven't seen any Enigmas in Southeast Asia. Pretty popular everywhere else. This guy's like second phase ban material. He's a good off laner. Uh, you can just like deny up creeps and kind of play him almost like a tide in some ways. He just gives like earlier push mm. and um, still offers some sustain, but Dia with uh, the back. black hole and um, some lower cooldown, maybe a little bit more impactful spells in a lot of ways, but not the best uh, frontline meat sack for you. So. We'll see. Maybe we'll get him. Maybe not. <laughs> That's the best description I've ever heard. All right. So we're going to be moving on. Bands coming out. We've just talked right over them. Five Tinker Legion, once remaining. again, banned out from Trust. I mean, Geek Fam, they're okay with that. Clearly, they Reserve made time. a lineup work without Tinker Legion last time. So they got themselves a Weaver as well. We saw how freaking incredible Psyonix was on that. He got off to a great start, picked up, what, like four or five kills in the first three minutes in lane and that was all she wrote yeah i guess um a little bit weary of uh bkb piercing 
stuns just uh, in terms of like the spin the magic community and tp'ing so they don't want to they want their jug to be free to do his split push stuff so legion commander one of the better heroes uh, to try and stop that i'm a little worried about the fact that shadow fiend's still in the pool i think geek fam could do a lot of work with that hero likely to see it come out i would say um but trust will offer the dazzle themselves so at least that is a, a pretty handy guy to have against such a hero I like the geek fam are not sweating the Meepo pick at all. They're just like, we're not banning it. <laughs> if you want to pick that up, you are our guest. So we'll see if that's going to happen. But I think it's very doubtful. Yeah, Especially with Bounty right. Hunter still in the pool. Five seconds it, uh, remaining. It's unlikely to be too much fun for them. Uh, and they can also just like fifth. They, they probably have to fourth pick it. Because it's still for a fifth ban. I mean, depending on your lineup, you probably still don't want to have to deal with a Meepo, even if it didn't go too well the last time. We all know how Meepo can go. You think we're going to see a bounty here again for Geek Fam? Because they certainly got it off the ground last game, but Bounty's one of those high-risk, high-reward heroes. I don't think so. Uh, I think you want your slider to be your four instead. I think he does everything that you want your bounty to do, and you just want to focus. Probably going to pick up their five here. There's no real reason to show their mid yet. Uh, hey, Venge again. That was fun. Yeah, Venge is fine. Uh, swap's good against the Jug. Uh, they don't have any, like, high armor guys to help out, really. Uh, no. Uh, I think Dazzle would have been, like, probably ideal, but obviously snagged away from Trust. They could have done, like, Dazzle, Shadow Fiend combinations would have been super oh, strong. So nasty. So. But they are going to go for the Venge. Uh, we saw some Radiant really nice Queen. swap stuns coming out of Crimson. And there's, uh... Trust, go for the Sven. Yeah. I, he's kind of become the standard answer. Um, and SEA... You know, Jug, great hero first overall because you can just throw him in the mid lane and then get the Sven up against these minus armor strats. So, Trust are going for a very default approach. No Meepo, just stock standard, get our heroes, and we'll leave our four roll decider at the end if it's going to be Sand King or, uh, or a different hero here, perhaps. So, a lot of pressure on the war cry this game. I love what Geek Fam are doing. They're saying, all right, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're just going to draft pretty much the same thing we had before. Spare the Slardar, who's like, all right, yeah, we got Slardar. Great. Like, that's even better. You think Geek Fam are going to go and finish it off with a Slark again? Ten seconds remaining. Uh, that was kind of a unique situation for sure for like a Slark mid. Five Against the Meepo, remaining. especially. Yeah. Uh, I think OD's a fine ban. I think Shadow Fiend is still actually okay, even if you don't know who their four is. Because uh, you know it's going to be a Jugment anyway. Uh, not that you'd have too much fun, but if they want to give... Uh, actually, they have pretty bad four wolf heroes. Maybe they don't want to Shadow Fiend. Because Slider doesn't oh. want to be there mid. He can't bully. Is it sad that I'm so used to elimination mode, I just tried looking over on the other monitor to see what heroes are banned? Yeah, no. It would be nice to have the full list like you do when you... Uh, when, uh, when we draft in elimination mode. That'd be so handy. And the key? You have a hero poster on your wall. Yeah. Had that in my old uh, casting setup. Either way, Meepo banned out last. Geek fam, give it a little bit of respect to trust Meepo. Clearly, last game, PP didn't execute quite as well as he wanted to, but the fear is still there. Yeah, that's kind of surprising, but at the same time, Meepo. So, no real reason to risk it. Uh, speaking of which, see if they go for a high risk or a low risk mid laner. I don't think we want to see PL, I would assume, against the, the Sven All right, let's, jug. Let's just like see a Huskar and then Geek Fam can do whatever they want. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, a Drow isn't. Okay, no, they're going for the Shadow Fiend like you talked about. It's just stable, it's good, it outputs crazy amounts of damage. It's pretty versatile and you can build it up in a number of ways. I definitely like what geek fam are doing you're gonna have shadow fiend to kind of get that early damage roll and then weaver is gonna pick up the slack in the late game when shadow fiend starts to fall off a little Ten bit definitely a, a solid choice coming out see how trust is gonna respond to that mid's Five gonna be crazy remaining. oh that's gonna be active dude that's what i would say um uh, i would think they'd probably i mean if they have an earth spirit player it's a hell of a game taking earth spirit i would say up against the weaver for the silence uh, you can roll in on the Shadow Fiend mid, and then that comboed up with Juggernaut spins will be a ton of harass early on. They only have a Vengeful Spirit to try and help, and that's not going to do anything. So uh, if they don't pick it here, I think it's only because they don't have a player, I'm guessing, or someone who's comfortable with it because it seems exceptionally strong. Uh, if they... Yeah, no, I just that just sounds too good to me. They could try something similar, like if they have a Tusk player or something, the same idea could apply. 
I do think going for a four here makes a lot of sense. Definitely using the last of their reserve time and Russ trying to figure out the best way to get back into this. Again, Trust took a game off of Clutch, which seemed to be a super strong, super together team, much like Geek Fam are. We'll see if they can keep that streak alive, if they can actually make this an even series, or if Geek Fam are going to just roll over them, because they looked hella Tempor strong, game assessing. number one. Okay. I really like this TA pick. So uh, we have some interesting things happening. Is this a support Sven then? And he just goes for the Max Warcry, I guess. And we throw our TA mid. We go position one on the jug. I mean, could it be like an offlane jug and then Sand King Dazzle support duo? I feel like support Sven is just underwhelming. Eh, I mean, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's when doable. it's all minus armor, it, it does a lot of work. Yeah, that's fair. There's a lot of armor play going on here. Uh, let me see here. Da, da, da. All right. Okay. Well, we'll see where these people wind up. I mean, we used to get jungle jug. That was always pretty fun. But uh, that was back when Iron Town was absolutely insane. Whereas now it's not quite as insane. Five seconds remaining. For our final game of the day. All right, we're in. Loading up. We've got our ceremonial pause once again. What would Mr. Cat be without it? Predictions for this game, now seeing the draft and seeing how the teams performed in game one. Uh, I actually think I like Trust Gamers draft. Uh, I don't think that means they're going to win, but I think they're in a much better spot. In the last game, I can see how this jug will get things done. I can understand the support Sven and all its merits here. And I like the idea that they went for maybe a slightly riskier play and not just sending the jug mid. Instead, going for this TA, knowing that it's going to be a Shadow Fiend with a weak assistance. If he gets any, it would just be, like, Avenge. So, having this TA, you're just going to try and, like, abuse mid and try and get as much gold as possible and snowball the game from there. So, they have a path to victory on the side of Trust this time that's a lot easier to read and understand than the previous game. However, Geek Fam, Velo, great axe player. I, mean, I just saw it last game. He had a hell of a game. And uh, he should be getting himself a pretty fun lane once more here. So, uh, a, a much more even game coming up, but you still have to favor Geek, I'd say. All right, so teams seem to be in good high spirits after what could have been a pretty crushing game for Trust, but they're staying in it. They got their head right. See how they're going to perform here. I mean, what's Trust's most crucial things? Like, timings and lanes. Like, what has to go right for them to have a good game? Well, it's unsurprisingly all about the TA, right? You just you just get her farmed. Um, Lakel's rotations at, like, 6 and stuff will be good. But ideally, whatever happens, like, all your support staff, everyone should just be trying to help out this TA as much as possible. And uh, Lakel's be doing his best to try and either be there for those fights, throwing out Omni Slashes and Spins, and then helping with the push with the Healing Ward, or he needs to be split pushing really hard and uh, dodging out these axe calls, of course, being able to stop him from just doing spin TPs. The battle begins. All right, battle begins, and it's going to be no stolen runes again. Everyone just going, staying on their side of the map, playing nice, at least for now. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty curious to see how this support, support Sven plays out. Like you mentioned, just maxing out the Stormhammer and the Warcry to help against the negative armor coming in from Geek Fam, but uh, it's an uphill battle, definitely. Yeah, not the easiest thing to make work, and uh, yeah, in terms of the help mid, it's going to be Raji spamming out a couple crushes here, just coming for the punches, and honestly, there's not really much a TA can do, although, you know, he's no ogre. He's still super obnoxious, and he's going to throw all his mana at you. Oh, it's just so irritating as a mid laner. <laughs> I'm surprised Dazzle wasn't here to do this as well, but instead went bottom, maybe hoping to catch Axe early on a level 1 gank or something, and TA's paying for it. The good news is as TA picks up more levels, it's going to get more and more difficult for Slardo to do that. The refraction's going to get stronger, and the side blades are going to start to do a little bit of work against that fish boy scaly skin. But for now, it's just going to be Teehee getting all the farm in the world. The other thing about it is that you can just use the shrine. Like, it's not that punishing for Raji to do that because Chancellor Shafi won't need it in the first three minutes. Like, it's not that big of a deal. 
or rather five minutes that is um just it's not a huge issue Fame all right on down the near the here. bottom lane <laughs> that dazzle was a little bit deep uh, perhaps unnecessarily, although the battle hunger runs out, Vila will still find the first blood with one more swat of the ruby staff. Well, back to mid. Tihi just easily busting through these refraction charges, and he's doing very well in terms of last hits. Having one more than TA, denying her up quite a bit. Yeah, great start here for Vila, though. It's the first blood, get himself some booties, moving towards his tranquils, and uh, although what does trying to get deny <laughs> won't quite grab it in time. And uh, a little bit of stack of creeps there too, also somewhat scary. If the supports ever like end up over there asking perhaps goad them into it and try and go for a play. But support Sven standing by. Trying his best. Up top, there's going to be a rotation out, so Psyonix is going to get a lot of free farm here. Now, topping out the last hit chart. Yeah, Tiki as well. Come down and grab himself the Banny rune. Head back towards mid. Not going to miss out on all too much. He'll miss a range creep, but... Things starting out a little bit calmer than perhaps we would have thought, but Geek Fam, they're content with this. They're just going to farm up, get their first big round of items. I want to see if Weaver itemizes differently this game, because last game we saw him go in for the first item Mjolnir after uh, just picking up a starting item, so this time maybe he's a little bit more cautious, picks up his Desolator before a full Mjolnir BKB. Yeah, on, on the one hand you can say like, oh they have that war cry, so we should get the uh, the Deso to try and like cancel it out. On the other hand you can just dodge it, and even going back towards that Maelstrom once again could be very handy for them. Oh, top lane. Looks like there is going to be the Swarm connecting onto NT. He does have his Burrow Strike. So they're not going to be able to follow up from there. Even Vent with yeah, the Magic Missile. Raji, he'll be here waiting as he comes to the Shrine. Uh, he's going to he's let gonna him go. Oh, he's easy to solve, yeah. Oh, close one. Courier even slipping its way back home. Not quite flying yet. Okay, Axe going to take a Storm Hammer Stun. But Lakels just doesn't have the damage to clip him down. In fact, Velo gonna turn aggressively here. Wants to take this stack and should be able to do so. Mid lane. He's got himself a Berserker's Call. He's gonna grab it onto two. Mid lane, there is a kill. There is gonna be a return kill down bottom as Storm's able to re or Sven is able to reinitiate with a storm hammer after eating a mango. Oh, there you go. So Sports Sven, getting work done. Jungle stack is gonna be saved for now. That was something Axe was really thirsty for, but what the able to defend it. He's gonna find some good farm for himself now. Support Sven, starting to stack up. Well, I guess they uh, trust. They, uh, they are looking like they have some issues unless they fix stuff very quickly. Bullying in the mid lane just gave Teehee a great start. Then you've got a Dazzle soaking mid as your TA is clearing out some neutrals. She's starting to fall a little bit behind here. They already have a stack going though, so this is oh, that Down kind of bottom, Lakels. He's spinning to win, but Raji's able to land another crush. They got the battle hunger. There's a TP coming down from the Sand King. If he can actually get a Burrow Strike off in time, maybe able to hold them back. In fact, Lakels is able to live from this. Eats himself up a mango to put down a healing ward. Now wrap around from the mid lane. We are going to have a rotation through. You got Dazzle coming forward. Another Burrow Strike to hold people in place. Raji's actually in trouble, taking a poison touch. Axe doing what he can to keep the Sand King at bay. Another crush coming forward, but Lakels, with his healing ward, is able to find the kill shortly before Raji is able to TP out. Very nicely played. Now that's going to tie up the kill score and keep this bottom lane in check. Yeah, phase boost now for Lakels as well, so he can maybe put a little bit more pressure on anyone who wants to come and tangle with his lane and it's what the up here who ends up soaking the experience of Sven. Pretty handy on the support. Uh, ideally wanting to get into a blink dagger. It's kind of the uh, the dream scenario here, but could also wind up into like aura builds and stuff depending on uh, how far or how behind his, uh, his sanking him is, is on the net worth chart. I really like the way Trust are playing this Sven. They're letting him be very, very greedy as far as support Svens go. Down bottom, Velo looking for a quick dunk. Wants to get down Lakels. Oh man, that last spin's able to get the kill. Axe, not gonna lose his life here. The poison touch gonna expire just in time. Velo definitely playing with fire there. 
He puts so much pressure down here. He just like keeps drawing these supports. Like we had this dazzle mid, he had to come down. And then, although they like, got the kill the last oh. time, but yeah. Weaver gonna, gonna be stunned up by the Stormhammer magic missile, and Psyonix is able to get off that ult. In fact, maybe turning things around. The buggies latch onto NT. Psyonix has that scoochie forward in two seconds. Like he is gonna try to at least uh, go back and get some more farm. Weaver, as well as Shadow Fiend, doing phenomenally in terms of last hits. 44 for each of those, and in terms of net worth, they're topping out the charts. Yeah, TA will have a pretty decent run back as, uh, oh, Femal knocking off for a stack. Yeah, okay, he'll get one more stack going here. So, crucial stuff here for ATA. Oh, Raji, though. Oh, he knows. What a guy. Oh, no. Oh, no. He doesn't stop it. No, Raji, no. I mean, he scouted it out. That's probably the next best thing. They can bring in the Weaver who can take it relatively quickly. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, maybe they can at least fight her at it, I suppose. But, I mean, unless they get a Vanguard Axe, there's, like, no way they can do anything about these. I mean, the best thing right now is that Psyonix has been pretty much completely unchecked on this Weaver. Already having the, the makings of a Dragon Lance building up into a full Helm first, though. It's kind of an interesting way to play it. Oh. Not too often we see it. Going straight in. They want to get NT down. He has the Burrow Strike, but there's a Slardar there to catch him out. If he does go for it, look at that bait. They got him. Dead Sand King, and they're looking for a dead Sven as well. The body blocks are there. Psyonix trying to get the Scoochie damage on him. Another crush to hold him in place. Raji's eaten tower shots, but it doesn't matter. One more hit means a double kill for Psyonix, and Raji just squiggles out fine. That was a sick play by him, considering he's a Slardar with nothing but brown boots. The body blocks were just so on point. Yeah, very, very nicely done. Panigal going his way, and uh, just more space, space, space. Almost 4k gold here on the Tihi. We'll see when he wants to get involved. Looks like it might be right now with this Invis rune. Let's get the Requiem. Could go hunting inside that jungle, and yeah, he'll join up on the smoke, and oh, remember, they have TA. that observer. Yeah, they see TA going at this. She's taking it fine. Her refraction's still down for 10 more seconds. She's got a meld. Is there any vision going in? The shrine going to be activated. They've got Teehee channeling up the ult. He's got his max souls. Oh my god. She just evaporated. And they were nice and low, so we can actually do something about a couple of them, but they'll leave the rest. Hell's coming in. Going to be some juicy farm for him. He's actually looking for the chase. He's got himself an Omni Slash, but got to be very, very careful about this. Yeah. Able to deward this, at least keep the ancient safe for now. But this is Geek's fam starting to pick up. Uh, a lot of momentum looking very similar to how last game was panning out. Omni Slash going to be only level one, split between two targets, so they're not able to find the kill on the Shadow Fiend. Although he is locked down from the Storm Hammer slowed as well. But Ooh. I mean, Tiki, he's not messing around. Eventually, he does go down. Psyonix gets low as well, but still worthwhile kill nonetheless. Psyonix is going to be revealed here, able to scoochie off that Storm Hammer. Meanwhile, Crimson finds the kill on the Sand King on the back line, so things all around going well for our dire side. Wow, they were duking it out for a long while, those two. They were, like, fighting up here and must have must have been, like, a massive chase that whole time while we were watching the TA and then <laughs> the push into mid. Yeah, looking at uh, overall net worth right now, 4,000 in favor of Geek Fam. Under 10 minutes in the game, that is a pretty significant lead. Similar story in terms of experience. This game, we have no Meepos to kind of skew things, so it's just Dire starting to pull ahead. Down bottom. Hilo wants to be scary. He wants to cut the wave. He's going to get jumped on here, eating up a ton of damage, and it looks like his buddy's just going to bail on him, realizing that is too ambitious of a gank. Yeah, they're doing a nice job of just bringing all their heroes on the Radiant. And sadly, that means that they saw full rotations bottom. They're going to try and make a play onto PP, but he uh, is well aware of this thanks to the ward. So immediately sentried. <laughs> Roger, you having none of that. Get his money back on the sentry. <laughs> Pressure coming in. We'll see if uh, mid lane's going to get denied. Refraction cut through. He wants to go in for this deny and is able to find it. That's a really wow. big pick. He needs that early gold. Mile down bottom, Raji doing his best to fend off the push coming in from four Radiant heroes. A TP in from the Axe should do just fine to drive everyone away. Yeah, that lead is Weaver. growing to a scary degree. Weaver's now got a full helm. He's going in towards his Dragonlance here, so he's making sure he's got those stats. 
Down in the bottom lane, Lakels doesn't have his Omni Slash here. He's gonna get punished without his ult. He's crushed up. He's gonna be graved. Now he's just cleaved, or rather, culled right on through. Swap back to cancel the TP. And there we go. Dazzle is gonna be finished off as well. Peak fam starting to really pull ahead in terms of kill lead. Up in the top lane, Psyonix, who's had free farm the entire game, picking off NT. Just forcing him back under his tier 2 tower, making him play much safer than he wants to. Yeah, sports fed started out gaining quite a bit of gold, but uh, with all these rotations he had to make, kind of starting to fall into a little bit more of the poverty mode. Uh, build as expected. Uh, maybe a slightly more focused on the cleave, but I guess it's kind of how we tend to see the sports fan anyway, whereas, like, maxing Stormhammer doesn't really do that much anyway. 225 damage, eh. Um, you can usually get a lot of the cleave in terms oh, of Oh, here we go. They'll find something here. It's going to cost them a Sand King ult. Psyonix is able to time walk out of... Oh, my. They can't kill this Weaver. They're trying everything. They're going to be able to reinitiate on him this time, but Psyonix is still going to be scoochied up. They actually commit the grave onto NT as Raji moves forward. He's going to eat a Stormhammer, and there's going to be a TP in from Lakels, who has his Omni Slash. He's unloading it onto Raji, and one more hit means they do bring down the Slardar. Thankfully, though, the Weaver able to get back across the river. There's a push on the tier 2 bottom as Dyer realized everyone from Radiant TP'd up to the top lane to help with that engage. Yeah, that was a nice play by Raji just coming. Basically run interference. They will find him once more, but looks like we see Onyx will be fine up top. And yeah, the siege continues. TP available on Axe and Shadowfiend, so they can easily make their way back top. And uh, don't want to hand this one over for free, I don't think. Crimson going in. This supports Sven. A little bit unlucky there. Gets called in. They've got Raji to follow up with a crush, so he just can't run away. He's going to take a quick storm hammer to the face, but they've still got the damage necessary. Crush actually really off the mark. Tihi picks it up with one more raise, though he's channeling up his ulti. Sand King has to burrow strike away just to make sure he lives through that soul dump happening. That was a little bit scary. Uh, it did stop the push top, though. Sand King was forced to come in. And I think Lakel's possibly already more farmed than he was on the Luna game. Uh, things looking a lot better so far with the helm, the phase boots, the ring of Aquila as well. Yeah, definitely having a better game, but Adafine and Weaver, they're having a phenomenal game as well. And right now the Dire, they're cleaning up the stack of Ancients after Shrining, so they're all reset and ready to go back in for another fight. Yeah, Yasha here from Tihi, so... Not, uh, I mean, I guess it's not the craziest thing, but no early Shadow Blade or anything. Maybe just worried about the fact that they've just kind of been five manning and they're going to be playing around this TA, so not going to feel like there's a bunch of value in it this game. They'll likely have detection for his Weaver anyway, so. Smart decision. Just become more of that one shotting, right clicking carry, knocking people down. Let Weaver be the slippery guy in this one. With the, trying to push up against Psyonix, but I mean, this Weaver is really, really farmed for how early it is in the game. Raji, he's waiting in the trees here. Sure would like to jump onto PP, and we'll see if that's going to be happening. He is solo, so it's pretty difficult to find this kill. Meanwhile, wrap around here onto the Sven. I mean, it's just a Not support again. Sven. He's getting picked on so much, but he is just so dead. There is no Requiem, so... The chase could Bionics. be profitable. In a little bit of trouble here. He's going to get swapped back. He's able to time lapse. Venge gives her life for this, but it's going to set up for a nice crush on Raji. Lakels is able to find the kill on Crimson. Eventually, is going to be able to get Shallow Graved up, but they've got Velo who can dunk right on through it. Now, underneath the shrine Run. on the high ground, it's looking risky. Nice reinitiation there with the Borrow Strike, but Radiant Geek Fam will still be able to get out alive. That was a sick swap. Yep. That was Very saving nice Psyonix's Crimson. ass at all costs. Yep. Fully bailed out on that one. So, uh, again, more nice team play coming out here from Geek Fam. Good objectives, good decision making. They've saved all their tier ones. They've now taken down two tier twos, one to go. And uh, the Deso, eh, it's still a, a decent pace away here from Sionics, but they have a Shadow Fiend. So, not ne necessarily as required as they move into the pit. Now, looking at the overall net worth, we have tipped over 10,000 in favor of Geek Fam at only 15 minutes in. Again, looks like they're just kind of outclassing. Uh, things, again, perhaps uh, at least pos more possible this time uh, 
for Trust. Trust. Thinking but. about the smoke gang still, even after the Aegis has been claimed, Axe can be going forward. Swap again. Crimson saving the day. Has her own missile if necessary. And Tiki, he's still got his ult to let loose. PP gonna get those refraction charges burned. But on the back lines, the Shallow Grave can only save our uh, juggernaut for so long. Hold He's going to go down. Psyonix is having a great game. The blade mail from the axe shown off. He's able to find exactly what he needs. The axe is still alive. Oh my god. It's a bloody massacre. Four for absolutely nothing. And NT going to be trying to scurry his way away. Crimson has no four staff, no blink, but there is going to be a wraparound here from Raji. Able to blink forward. They find the crush. They get the corrosive haze. Maybe they let NT off with a warning here. They'd rather just go for the towers. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's no urn or anything on the slider, so it doesn't feel like he'll have the chase potential. Let's them all go, doesn't want to go down himself, and uh, yeah, tier twos. Let's see what they want to do now. Still have the Aegis. Could poke away at the shrines, but there's uh, 200 gold away from Adesso, so you want to buy that first before you try any riskier building plays. Psyonix on this Weaver is absolutely unstoppable. Got to play at both games so far. 4-0-6 this time. I believe by this time last game, Weaver was godlike, but, you know, can't have everything. Yeah. This is uh, one of those drafts you look at, though. You look at the ratings and you say, if they lose this game, it's probably going to be pretty bad. And, uh, I mean, that's TA for the most part, but uh, up against like, yeah. an axe, too, where this blade mail's just come out. It's so difficult for her to do too much, but she'll try again here with the Deso. See if someone I mean, can Axe get have some up. fun with his dunk going through the shallow graves as well. Dazzle's like, oh, I got you, sick grave, you're saved, man. And then Axe just nopes, just fakes it. Yeah. Good old Axe. Bionix. Now with that Desolator on the courier heading towards him. Wants to defend this tier one tower. Man, they really have not amounted to too much push anywhere. Top was their best chance so far. And uh, any other big items out here? Not That's seeing any. We're working on. Oh, is that a. Yeah, another solo crest for Raji. That'll be handy. It's more of this minus armor strategy. Crimson playing more of the five this time. He's got his urn. He's there to tag up that Sand King. Their only real good initiation this game. Oh, <laughs> down bottom. There's going to be a jump. NT is going to take that corrosive haze. Goes into the sandstorm, but I mean, they can still see him. He's trying to juke and jive his way through the trees, but may not be so practical. He's just going to sit back and try to burrow strike his way out. But again, they've got the bug to wrap around on the other side. He's going to blink across the oh, map, nice. but will get crushed up before his TP can take offense. So that's uh, easy. Yeah. Uh, he knew his only chance was a burrow blink, but top lane, they lost found PP. Oh, look at that. The axe is so low, but goes in for the call dunk anyway. I wonder how that Kels. kicks off. Well, either way. Yep. Things continuing to crumble here for trust. Just about at that thousand gold per minute lead. Coming in for Geek Fam, 19 minutes in the game, just about 20,000 net worth in their favor. XP going to be about 15,000, looking at levels, and that's breaking down to Dazzle not even having his level 10, while Weaver and Shadow Fiend are over 15 now. Yeah, for now they're just uh, medallioning on Sionix, but when this Solar Crest comes out, it's going to be so good. Just give him evasion up against his TA. I mean, look at this tower go down. Sionix just doesn't even care that he got burrow struck. Kells is sitting back, he does have his ult. Maybe something they want to keep an eye out for. Weaver going to take a storm hammer to the face, but it's only slowing him down temporarily. Got a minute left on the able to finish down the uh, tier three from the low ground. Psyonix going in for this melee barracks. Now, they could just back off and go for shrines here, but they definitely want to test their luck. Yeah, I, again, Bench only a minute left, so might as well, right? Like. Yeah. Bench has the clutch swap if necessary. Crimson very eager to sacrifice himself for his team. This slow siege coming out of Psyonix is going to do it. They get down the melee barracks. They're starting at the range. This thing is just melting. <laughs> They're hitting the sand cake with the Shadow Fiend illusions, too, to prevent any <laughs> oh sort of no. initiation. Look at this thing. This is the uh, easiest barracks. Yeah, they're going to be wrapping around. Like, PP really wants to keep his farm up going for that bounty rune. But at what cost, sir? Your racks are down. Yeah, they will lose the Aegis here, at least. But uh, still, as you said, the swap is there. The initiation from Raji can come as well. Velo too. There's no real reason to back, honestly. 
There they go. Age is officially consumed. It's going to be a rather long Roche respawn this time. But, uh, I mean, Geek Fam are fine with that. They can just keep sieging and farming until that Roche comes out. Because right now, Trust are completely confined to their base. Anytime they leave, they're just destroyed. And you look at the map, and there's actually only one Sentry Ward. One dire sentry ward all the way up in their jungle, so it's not like dire have phenomenal vision. They're just walking everywhere together. They're staying as a crew. Crimson Guard now on the way here. Oh, and delivered actually to Velo, so. Oh, we can stay around a little longer now. And we got this uh, giant damage block against TA and Sven for the whole team. Of course, the pipe would be kind of handy for NT, but he's, uh, he's still lurking here. Let's see if Crimson can sniff him out with a wave of terror. Nice little ward exchange there, burning up some more of Radiant's money. One more sentry ward put down in the mid lane means Weaver can easily de-ward the Observer and Sentry that Radiant had just put in front of their tier 3. Unfortunate, but it's just Geek Fam pulling further and further ahead. Yeah, now maybe feeling like they, they want to pressure this one a little bit. You know, last time, Trust took a while to GG out. Oh, something cancelled. Must have got refract or uh, Oh, they go forward. <laughs> Look at that, Sven's so scared. He gets a really nice storm hammer onto Psyonix, but... Can't do anything. They have to commit with an epi, but they have to find Crimson in order to do that, and he's just positioning well back there. One of those games where TA just never quite came online. She's got herself a Desolator and a Blink now, so she's got her core items, but she's just feeling so underwhelming compared to the damage of the Shadow Fiend and the Weaver. There's just a Centaur in here scouting them, and they can't do anything about it. That's <laughs> oh. not good. It's just They chilling, literally dude. can't right-click it. Why? Alright, there we go. Axe is going to be going in. Gets a double man call. He's got blade mail rocking as well. There is a shallow grave coming in, but Axe can cut right through that. TA goes to work onto the Weaver, but he's easily able to time lapse off. The dunk is going to be missed <laughs> from the Centaur. Axe, but the neutral Centaur stun secures the kill on the Sand King. Everyone's buying back, but it looks like this could be the last hold coming out from Trust as they are easily focused down. Nice ult from the Sand King, but they're getting all the picks that they need. Everyone getting evaporated. Dazzle, the lone survivor, just crawling back to the fountain while typing GG. Well played, Geek Fam. Yeah, very much so. Totally outclassed them in these two games. I'm sure uh, Geek Fam will be looking at these thinking, yeah, you know what, we had some solid drafts, we understood what they were doing. Uh, maybe they didn't see the TA last bit coming, but it was a, uh, a nice attempt by Trust, I guess, in order to maybe catch them off guard or something, or trying to abuse the lane, but Teehee just completely walked over mid both games, played very well. TA was forced in the jungle early, couldn't keep up at the same pace, didn't get any help from the supports though. There's like no pressure from this Dallas or anything in the mid lane, instead you just have this uh, Slardar running at you at level 1. So, can uh, can understand the, uh, the frustrations there, but well played to Geek Fam, I'd just say more so them just looking really strong than uh, Trust looking all that weak. Yeah, definitely a team to keep your eyes on. I'm excited to keep watching them in the Mr. Cat tournament. I think this is our new Southeast Asian power team, so... Good things all around. Another successful day of Mr. Cat. Uh, well, we're going to kick it to elimination mode pretty soon, huh? Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's uh, not too far away from our ability draft kickoff, so that'll be, what, one hour from now-ish? Yeah. About, yep. Yeah. Yep, so. We're already setting up in the studio, so stick around. It's be on this channel right here, so you can just kind of zone out, keep it up. When it starts making noise again, you'll know we're back, but <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the games. All right, goodbye, guys.